let's discuss about the transport layer protocol and other one by one what actually a transport layer protocol the host keys server authentication occurs at the transport layer uh, based on the server uh, possessing a public or a private key pair a server may have multiple host keys using multiple different asymmetric encryption algorithms multiple host may share the same host key in any case the server host key is used during key exchange to authenticate the identity of the host uh, for this to be possible the client must have a uh, prior knowledge of the uh, server's public host key uh, which have been uh, given in the record format uh, rfc 4251 which indicates two alternative trust models the two alternative trust models uh, that can be used uh, the first one the client has a local database that associates each host name as typed by the user uh, with the corresponding public host key this method requires no centrally administered infrastructure and no third party coordination the downside is that the database of name to key association may become uh, a burdensome burdensome to maintain the second one the host name to key association uh, which is uh, certified by a trusted certification authority ca the client only knows the certific uh, certification authority a root key and can verify the validity of all host keys certified by the accepted CS. This alternative uh, is the maintenance problem since ideally uh, only a single CA key needs to be securely stored on a client. On the other hand, each uh, host keys must be appropriately certified by a central authority before authorization is possible next we are going to move on to the second one packet exchange the packet exchange is nothing but which has an established the tcp connection uh, the transport layer protocol first uh, the uh, client uh, establish a tcp connection to the server this is done via the tcp protocol and is not part of the transport layer protocol once the connection is established the client and the server exchanges the data the exchanging data may be identified the string exchange algorithm negotiation or a key exchange end of key exchange or service request uh, and uh, after which is referred uh, to as a packets in this data field of tcp segment and finally using a specified data format or a packet format which is going to be identified let us see about this packet formation in a detailed manner uh, establishing a connection so here the identifying and string exchange and algorithm negotiations are going to be get happen over there so when a server when a client and a server which are going to be get establishing establishing a tcp connection then they are going to identify the string exchanges they are going to exchange the strings for the identification client sends ssh a proto version with software version to the server meanwhile server so provides the same ssh proto version uh, 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 and software version to the client which makes both client and server to identify each other then they are going to request for the algorithm negotiation then they are going to send the message for the algorithm negotiation between client and server next they are going to enter into the key exchange the key exchange is going to be happen in between the server and client uh, they are going to have two sessions over here the end of uh, key exchange so when the key exchange is going to happen sender or a, a client will request for a message with new keys as well as server will give the message with new keys and the service is going to be get requested from the uh, client side to the server with a specified packet format let us see how this uh, transport layer protocol which is going to make the packet formation 
which consisting of four different data over here as packet length, padding length, payload and message authentication code. Let's discuss. A payload is going to be get uh, present over here which is going to be get compressed and provide the compressed payload and along with that a packet length, a packet length, padding length and a padding is going to be added over there and here we are going to have a header of a packet length and the padding length. The compressed data is going to be consisting of this data and this is going to be get encrypted this all the data are going to be get encrypted the encrypted data which consisting of a packet length padding length compressed payload data and the padding bits are going to be present in the encryption data then a sequence number is going to be added over there and along with the encrypted data the sequence number is going to be added and which is going to be uh, given over there to provide or to create the Mac so after this the encryption we are going to get a cipher text and after the Mac which is going to be having a data then finally the cipher text and the Mac data both together is going to be called as SSH packet so here the particular packet length which uh, identifies the length of the packet in bytes not including the packet length and the MAC field and padding length the padding length uh, uh, which identifies the length of the random padding field which have been added over here and the payload useful content of the packet uh, which is superior to algorithm negotiation this field is uncompressed if compression is negotiated then in subsequent packets this field is going to be compressed uh, sometimes random padding also going to be get possible over there uh, once an encryption algorithm has been negotiated this field is going to be get added the random padding is going to be get added it consists of a random bytes of padding uh, so that the total length of the packet excluding the mac field is a multiple of the cipher block size or eight bytes for a stream cipher then finally a message authentication code if the message authentication code has been negotiated this uh, field contains the mac value the mac value is uh, computed over the entire packet plus a sequence number the mac value which is going to be consisting of a sequence number the sequence number is an uh, implicit 32-bit packet sequence that is initiated to zero for the first packet and incremented for every packet the sequence number is not included in the packet sent over the tcp connection uh, once an encryption algorithm has been negotiated the entire packet uh, excluding the mac field uh, is encrypted after the mac value is calculated the ssh transport layer packet exchange consists of a sequence of steps the first step uh, the identification of string exchange begins with the uh, client sending a packet with an identification string of the form SSH proto version uh, software SP comment CRLF. Already we come across with this, isn't it? Such a way. Uh, next, uh, what happens? The negotiation algorithm. Uh, each side uh, sends an SSH message consisting the list of supported algorithm in order of preference to the sender and as well as the algorithm includes the key exchange encryption mac algorithm and compression algorithms okay so let us see about some of the few uh, cryptographic compression algorithms a cipher uh, which may be in a form of 3 des 3 des uh, which may consisting of uh, three key for the 3 des and blow fish two fish two fish 256 bits or 192 bits or two fish 128 bits or aes algorithm advanced encryption standard 256 bytes or 192 bytes or 128 bits and uh, such a way the different parameters different encryptions are going to different encryption process are going to be get present over there the mac algorithm which may use an hmac uh, sha1 or a hmac sha1 with 96 bits uh, HMAC with the message digest 5 and uh, HMAC with message digest 5 with uh, 96 bit and the compression algorithm may be uh, an uh, Zlib defined in the RFC uh, 1950 and RFC 1951 may be used over there as a compression 
algorithm. These are the things which has been present in the cryptographic algorithm for the SSH transport layer.